Good morning and welcome to Juice and Java, Syracuse University's only morning talk show. I'm Jackie Prager. I'm Jamie Weiss. And I'm Caroline Strange. And it's finally starting to feel like spring. I know we had some snow flurries come in every once in a while, but the sun's been out a couple of days and it's warming up a little bit, at least for now. Just a little bit of sun makes me so happy. I'm so tired of all the snow dark days and even if it's just for a little bit it's just you feel so much better. I know I'm ready to start breaking out my shorts and once we do see that warmer weather it's officially time to register for classes for next semester when the weather will be really warm here in Syracuse so I know I'm struggling to figure out my schedules for next semester. What about you guys? I mean I'm always on top of it. I actually figure it out way before anybody else and everybody thinks I'm crazy but if you're struggling uh, course goat a couple of SU students designed a website that helps you pick your classes so if you're struggling that way it can figure out what time you want to start how late it should be what kind of classes you want to take and that's a really good way to help out that's so helpful yeah, that's so smart I wish I, I knew about that. that I'll need to look into it for tonight but I know you're going abroad next semester I know I always get very stressed out around this time but I'm going to Florence and so I register a different time so I'm really excited for that which well, is be crazy fun, yeah. being abroad but speaking of being abroad we have some inter exciting international news Kate Middleton is expecting her second kid and it's so cute. Do we so know boy or girl or baby names? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think people are speculating it might be a girl, but I don't think they've officially released anything. I mean, I know I'd love to be a princess, so <laughs> anything like her. And I'm sure Prince George will make a great older brother looking out for if it is a girl. Otherwise, he'll have another companion to play with, at least. Definitely. He yeah. definitely will. Well, I know some other news. We have Mayfest and Block Party coming up pretty soon. I know there's been a lot of speculation about who's performing. It seems like it's taken so long for them to announce, but it's been like the same amount of time from last year, right? Mm -hmm. It was about so. this time last year, maybe a little bit earlier. I don't know, but people felt like it took a really long time. I know all of our social media, everybody thought, you know, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? Who's coming? You know, speculating about who it is. I know. Everyone's just been throwing out who they want, like crazy names and making it such a joke, but I'm really excited. This is, I think that this is the best thing that we do at our school. It's definitely one of the most fun days we have here, and hopefully the weather will be that spring weather, so it'll be a nice, good day outside. Yeah, I don't know who it's going to be yet either, but some of our Juice and Java reporters went out to ask some Syracuse students, who do you think is coming to Mayfest and Block Party, and who do you want to see? Let's check it out. One of Syracuse's most highly anticipated events is creeping up on us. We asked students which artists they would pick to come, and we got some interesting answers and some predictions. Um, I think Nicki Minaj is coming to Mayfest this year. I think it depends on the vibe. I think Beyonce always kills it, so she's a safe bet. Maybe Kanye West could open for Beyonce. And then Kim really could come. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I think 50 Cent is coming. I want Kendrick Lamar to come because I love him and his new album is awesome. I feel like it's an EDM artist. Well, I mean, because we've already had previous EDM artists. And also, um, most likely a rapper to open him. Or her? I have no idea. I haven't heard anything. No. But I mean, Drake would be nice. Even um, Childish Gambino would be nice too. Um, Big Sean, maybe. Or Kendrick Lamar again. That'd be nice. I definitely want The Weeknd to come. Um, or Kid Cudi, or some, like Sam Smith. Um, because I feel like there, there's something a little different about them compared to like the previous artists we've had here. And I would just like something. I, I don't know, just different, other than just strictly EDM. I think they should get Lana Del Rey and, um, and ASAP Rocky, because you have like the indie first, and then you have rap after, and they already have a song together, and they usually get someone, they usually get two people that complement each other, and that like play, play to multiple different crowds, and I feel like those two people together can do that. For Mayfest, I think it's really a toss-up. Um, I know like Ariana Grande's on tour, so I don't think she'd be the option, but maybe some, I, I think somebody big will eventually come. Maybe, I, I don't know about Drake, or I had heard about some names, but not really sure. Oh, I haven't really heard anybody saying anything. It's like going to be a really big surprise, I think, so that'll be fun. Uh, I've never thought college has had something like this, so I thought this was pretty great, how we bring in artists and it's cheap compared to like regular concert tickets. I think if they still stay with that, um, maybe like a dynamic of one hip hop artist and another EDM artist, kind of bring two different spectrums together. I think if they could do something like that, it'd really make for a great concert again. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never 
become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. We're here now with Patty Terhune, who's the head writer of Float Your Boat. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so first, can you just tell me a little bit about what Float Your Boat is? Yes. Uh, so we're a sketch comedy group on campus, which means that we film comedy sketches and then we release them. Uh, right now, we've got a couple of videos in our lineup for this semester. And what makes us different than some of the other comedy groups is most people have heard of Zamboni, which is the improv group on campus. And sometimes they get a little confused by like what's, what the difference is. Zamboni is improvisational, which means that everything is on the spot. Whereas Float Your Boat, the sketches are written, they're produced, and then they're released online. And so that's really like, uh, actually a lot of the members of Zamboni are in Float Your Boat, which is kind of funny to see how people uh, combine two different comedy styles. So then as head writer, what is your position and like how did you get involved with Float Your Boat? I joined Float Your Boat my first semester freshman year. I was one of those freshmen that signed up for every single thing at the involvement fair and then decided from there what I wanted to do. And uh, so when I joined, I would, I would just be like a regular member. I would pitch ideas at the meetings and then from there we would help mold the ideas as a group. Everyone gives their input on every single idea and then from there the person who came up with the idea decides what they want to do in forming the sketch. And then from there they bring the sketch to the group and the group reads it through. And where the head writer comes in is that once the sketch is read through the entire group, the head writer will help them in putting the ideas that the group has from there back into the script and helping mold the script to be the most feasible to shoot and to make sure that all the jokes really land and to make sure that the sketch in general is the best that it can be. So how, do you, how often do you guys film or how many videos do you usually come up with? We try to film every, every weekend, but in college that's kind of hard sometimes with big events like Billy Joel or like the NCAA tournament. So in general, I would say we probably put out six to seven sketches a semester. We try to film one and then edit it that next week and then put it out. I, this, so far this semester we've put out three or four sketches, I believe, and we have another two or three in our lineup to release before the end of the semester. So then what do you guys have coming up? Just videos to release or do you have any events? We have two big videos coming up. One of them should be released within the next week. It's about a high school or a college freshman who goes back to high school and how freshmen always talk about college to high schoolers as if it's this big crazy thing and it's so different from a high school and how high schoolers just don't understand at all what's going on and they definitely just like talk down to them. And so that's coming up. And then we also have a live event that we're helping co-host. It's a stand-up comedy night. I believe it's going to be at Funkin' Waffles. I believe the tentative date for it is April 20th. And anyone can try out to do stand-up. What Float Your Boat is doing, we're helping get out the word. We're helping potentially some of our members will try out to do stand-up. We're helping host it. And anyone can try out. Release, uh, we will be releasing information about auditions soon on our Facebook page as will DKA, which is the uh, film fraternity on campus, and Humor Whore, which is another sketch group on campus. They'll all be releasing information, so definitely be on the lookout for that if you're looking to try your, uh, try your comic chops at stand-up, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and then how can students get involved in, can they just come and pitch ideas, or how do they get involved with the uh, Float Your Boat? We, have, we table at the involvement fair in the fall every year, and from there students can sign up, they can go to our general interest meeting, they can see more of our videos, they can hear our pitch about you know, when we're trying to sell ourselves to them and how uh, every member of Float Your Boat really is involved in every step of the process. Anyone can write, anyone can film, anyone can edit. And from there, uh, anyone can interview. And you just you talk to us for a little while, we kind of see what you, if you'll fit in the group, that kind of stuff. If you have any ideas currently in the works, we try to help you with that. And if it's not the beginning of the year, you can email uh, us at Float Your Boat Syracuse, I believe, at gmail.com, or just message us on Facebook. And if you have like a real interest and you want to join, we'll definitely meet with you and talk about it. Great. And then do you have any social media plugs or um, ways that we can follow you guys in your group? Yes, definitely. You can follow us at Float Your Boat Syracuse on Facebook, uh, FYBQs on Instagram and Twitter. 
we're looking to really start to get more involved uh, with our social media presence within the next couple of years. Uh, we have social media coordinators now within the group that are, it's their job to post funny like memes and stuff on our Instagram and everything like that. And we're looking to send our videos out to more like college sketch websites like uh, College Humor and like Bro Bible and ones like that. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming in. I'm looking forward to seeing all your videos that you're going to be releasing. And taking a look, we have one of our reporters, Clam Moran, who went out to the Acapella Invitationals over this past weekend on campus. So let's take a look. At 6 o'clock, Autotunes performed Senior Night Live. I share my chances, and I don't my chance. <laughs> Then at 8 o'clock, Orange Peel presented their Spring Invitational. Amen. Amen. The Autotune show featured performances from Premium Blend from Ithaca College and skits in between the songs. In one song break, T.J. Wells, the current public relations director of Autotunes, who will be the president next year, handed out senior superlatives. These seniors were my first friends here, and they're my best friends here. Um, it was the most surreal experience being able to say goodbye to them in the most honorable way possible. Orange Appeal also honored their seniors by presenting them with sneakers signed by the other members of the group. Their show featured performances from Syracuse's Main Squeeze and the Royal Pitches from the University of Buffalo. Orange Appeal also asked audience members to tweet about the show using the hashtag 44 days of OA and awarded prizes for the best tweets. Zachary Phillips is the president of Orange Appeal. I was really pleased with how it went. Um, we definitely wanted to just kind of showcase everyone's talents and be able to um, you know, have everybody get out there and just leave it on the stage sort of thing. And I think the guest groups totally killed it and were phenomenal. So I'm definitely really pleased with how it went. Claire Moran, Citrus TV. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to Juice and Java. I'm joined here by Austin Pollock, who is on the Public Relations Committee for Relay for Life. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So in a nutshell, what is Relay for Life? Really, right now, it's an event. Well, it's always an event, but <laughs> having an event... Uh, it's right now it's April 18th at the Carrier Dome starting at 6 p.m. and it's just an opportunity for everyone to gather around and find a cure for cancer. That's our biggest thing and also raising money. Right now we've raised more than $22,000 with over 800 participants so it's been really successful. That's incredible. Well congrats on that Thank feat. You. So how does someone get involved in Relay for Life? Really it's social media. If you keep an eye on the Syracuse University Relay for Life Facebook page we're always posting on there and how to, ways to get involved and to donate and of course the website relayforlife.org slash Syracuse University NY. That's a way to get involved because we're always posting there as well. Just hear our meeting times and you know contact people on the board. Hey, I want to get involved. We've got messages like through Twitter and through social media on just, hey, I want to get involved. What can I do? So I know a ton of student groups on campus get involved in Relay for Life. Yeah. They send out groups of people who walk around the track from the full 12 hours. Why do you Relay? I relay for my dad. My dad's currently in a battle of cancer. He was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer back in November of 2013. And, you know, we're very lucky that he's been strong and everything's going well. And, you know, for me, I can't imagine life without my dad. And, you know, he does so much for me. And um, it's really all in honor of him and really everyone who's fighting because you never know when life kind of just throws a curveball because, and it's always, I kind of live by this motto of making donations is great, but just showing just, unconditional love and just loving anybody as much as you can. That's kind of the best you can do because you can't find a cure right now, but you can always donate, but still, you know, I'm always there for my dad. I talk to him every day and you never know when, again, life's going to throw you a curveball. So it's just about living every day to the fullest. Well, it's incredible that you have a group of people right. who are supporting you at Relay. Yeah. So what 
give us a breakdown of the night. So we start at 6 p.m., yep. we end at 6 a.m. What are we doing for those 12 hours? It's really just entertainment. You know, we'll have bands come, acapella groups will perform, and there's going to be food, there's going to be snacks, there's going to be music. And it's really just an opportunity to hang out and against kind of all around this common idea of let's find a cure and it's people who raise money it's we kind of request a minimum of 20 of a 20 dollar donation at the door and it all just goes toward a great cause and so we're there for the full 12 hours is there food do people need to pack anything what's kind of allowed no you just kind of come in and do your thing and really just have a good time that's all it's about you don't have to bring anything and um but yeah just you know we'll have food it's going to be a good time all right, well, thank you so much for thank coming you. to the show, Austin. Thank you. So, speaking of food, some of our Juice and Job reporters went out to check out the new restaurant, Biblos. Let's take a look. Hart, right, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. The pressure's too much. I quit. I get it. I can do better. Just please, don't leave. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. The newest location of Biblos offers a different atmosphere while keeping the same genuine Mediterranean style. And why open a second location right down the street from the original? Uh, we had a lot of good following, almost to a point I would say a cult following because they love the healthy Mediterranean cuisine, they love our authentic Lebanese food, and they love the fact that they can get it at a nice setting. Affordable. The bar and grill attracts anyone from a group of friends watching the game to a couple enjoying a nice evening out. But it still has the same Lebanese roots as its sister cafe. Being first generation, 100% Lebanese, I've had the luxury of eating my mother's cuisines growing up. And she, by far, out of 10 sisters, her food has always been the one that during the holidays and stuff, they choose her meals. And every bite you take comes right from his mother's book of recipes. So everything that you get between the Mediterranean Cafe and now the bar and grill are all my mother's uh, recipes. It truly is a family affair, even as grandmother continues the authentic tradition by growing ingredients in her backyard. She has like a little farm in her back of her house where she grows all the certain spices from za'atar to the grape leaves and um, different kind of sumacs and stuff. To continue with the Mediterranean taste, they thought of everything from the ingredients they used to the equipment, even importing a grill from Cyprus. We imported a grill for, for the skewers. We specialize here in kebabs. So our biggest specialty here, what we really wanted to bring to the downtown Armory Square area, was making authentic, real shish kebab skewers. And the reputation the new bar and grill wants to leave Armory Square. Uh, my vision for this place is to be known as the authentic Middle Eastern slash Mediterranean Lebanese cuisine. I'm Marissa Palmer. And I'm Eliza Lennon, reporting for Juice and Java. Welcome back to Juice and Java. I'm joined now by Azzy, Abby Rosenblum, the creator, um, producer, and now host of College Eats Beyond Ramen, a cooking show here on Citrus TV. Thank you for being here, Abby. Yeah, thanks for having me. And you have some Easter treats that you're going to talk a little bit about. I know you couldn't yeah. bring any that we can have per se, but what are some of your favorite Easter treats to make? So my favorite one that I just tried recently is um, this little bunny pudding cup dirt cake sort of thing. So you get a Jello pudding cup, stack pack pudding cup. You can get those for five bucks at the grocery mm -hmm. store. Um, some peeps. I brought some with me. We have our peeps. <laughs> and um, you put some Oreos on top of the pudding, stick the peep in. You can get little gummy carrots, put those in there, and even fake grass I got mm -hmm. too. And you could they like look shake really that bad. around. They're really cute. <laughs> they remind me of when I was little. Like they'd be cute if you were like babysitting little kids. They would love mm -hmm. that. Or really just make it your dorm. I would make eat them all the time. <laughs> yeah, they're the perfect quick snack to make. Now, if you have a kitchen, what are some other things that you can make around Easter time? Maybe with deviled eggs, hard boiled eggs. What are some of your favorite things to make? Um, well, I love deviled eggs. I just I'm obsessed with them. I think they're awesome. And um, we actually had an episode where we did some Halloween deviled eggs, but you could Easter fry them and. Um, you, instead of cutting the eggs in half like you would normally for a deviled egg, you could cut it kind of like in a little eggshell shape and then put the other half on so it looks like a little chick popping out oh, of that's so adorable. <laughs> its shell. <laughs> <laughs> and what are some ways to make them healthier? I know swimsuit season is coming up, everybody's oh God, trying to eat healthy and go to the gym. <laughs> what are some things to kind of cut back on some of the fat in the deviled eggs? Yes, you can go for um, Greek yogurt or avocados. Um, so instead of the mayo, you could use Greek yogurt and mix that in so that way it cuts down a lot of the salt and um, some of the fats. 
And then if you um, substitute avocado for um, the mayo also, then you add, you're adding in good fats rather than bad fats. Mm -hmm. Greek so that's yogurt's one of my favorite things. I'm so glad the dining hall switched oh to God. one of their better yeah. Greek yogurts. I, are you a Chobani person? or? I am, but that's <laughs> not what they have in the dining hall anymore. Yeah. So I have, I think it's the, the Burn Dairy Farms, but they have pineapple, and pineapple is one of my favorite with the fruit Yum. in the bottom. Yeah. You gotta the go best. for the fruit in the bottom. I can't do just plain Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm, same. Or some of the vanilla Greek yogurt sometimes, and I'll put grapes or strawberries in there. Now, one of your recent episodes, you featured avocados. What are some of the ways that you can substitute them in some everyday recipes? Yeah, um, I haven't actually tried it yet, but we talked to this woman who owns a bakery called Avocado, like D-O-U-G-H, and she substitutes a lot of butter and um, fats for avocados in cookies and brownies and bars. So she sells them all around the Syracuse area and she's actually starting ordering online. Oh, so students can order them and like pick it up from Shine and get these healthier cookies and they're delicious. Well, that'll be great. Some of the ways that people can stay healthier and hopefully get ready for swimsuit season, but still enjoy some of their peeps on the side so they can add oh, the yeah. Greek yogurt and avocado <laughs> and then indulge themselves in peeps. And now some of the ways that students are helping to give back to the university out and about with Abby reporter Abby Isaacs went and found out what they were doing on campus for Philanthropy Week. Syracuse University Student Philanthropy Council kicked off their Week of Giving last Monday. This annual Philanthropy Week is geared towards raising awareness for the importance of philanthropy on campus. So the Student Philanthropy Council was created about uh, 10 years ago and its main purpose was to spread the idea of giving back to not the alumni of the university but the students. And Student Ambassador for the Philanthropy Council, Gus Whitaker, says this is the main goal of all of the events this week as well. To help people understand that there's, multi there's multiple ways of giving back. Um, money is of course one way, also giving back with time or your talent, so maybe coming and teaching a teaching a class or coming back and volunteering at certain events. One day of the week was geared towards thanking donors by having students write letters. And that's just a way to show the donors that we are grateful for what they've done for us and also another way of having students understand what's going on um, outside of their classes and outside of whatever activities are involved with. The organization Class Act also had an event during the week. iSchool representative for Class Act Haley Temple said they strive to make students aware of giving and where their money can go. Also encouraging students to make that gift. Just sparking the idea that just a little bit of effort can make a big difference at the university. During Class Act Day, students were encouraged to donate to any organization of their choosing and place their name on the giving tree. Giving your money to a certain organization says, I support this organization, I want to make a difference for a student coming into this organization in the future because they, it's made an impact on my life. This year, if you donate $20.15 or more to the class of 2015, you get this orange cord for graduation. Along with the cord, there are other incentives to donate to Class Act. We're also having an event at Club 44 within the Carrier Dome, so another way to show other students who have shown their support and say thank you and also focusing on bringing together that community of students who have shown they care about Syracuse. To finish out the week, the council hosted the Orange Circle Awards. And this recognizes people within the community or the university that have done something to give back to the university or give back to the community. Whitaker said that the week went really well, but there is room for improvement. There was a lot more student involvement, and I think one of the things we should try to pursue in the future is a lot more student involvement. So it's more of an alumni and faculty-based thing right now, and I think finding ways to get students more involved with the Philanthropy Week would help it and the students. From Shine Student Center, Abby Isaacs. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. 
and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. We've had such a great show today. I had so much fun talking with Patty Terhoon from Float Your Boat. I love comedy, and I think that just like groups like that, it's impressive what they do, and I'm so excited to see what they're going to have next year. Mm -hmm. I'm always really impressed with what students can do on campus because we have so many resources available to us, and I don't think everybody really knows that right off the bat. So all the different comedy groups, I think it's really great what they're able to come up with. It definitely is, and I know I got to talk to Austin Pollock about Relay for Life. I'm so excited to participate. I do it every year. I've done it like from kindergarten up, and especially with Philanthropy Week that just happened, it's really great to see people get involved through their student organizations and give back to the greater Syracuse community. Mm -hmm. I know I've signed up already, so I'm excited. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to go, but I am I went last year and I was really excited to be able to be there, but I don't know if I can make it this year. Well, I know you got to talk to Abby today. Yes. Always Unfortunately, a fan. she didn't bring us food. I was a little upset Always about that. Bad. But she was able to give us some great tips about eating healthy, and then we got to see Biblos. Now, have you been able to go down there yet? I went. It was amazing. I went towards the end of Downtown Dining Week, and they had this great, like, special menu. Got some pita, got some hummus. It was great. I love the food. You should definitely go. <laughs> I think that it's just incredible how many restaurants are down there, and you always there's always new ones popping up, like Biblos. And I mean, it's just so mm -hmm. such a great place. and modern mall yeah. a little bit before that. Yeah. There's a lot of great places downtown, and I feel like I need to go down there more. I'm just not down there enough. I know there's not enough time. <laughs> there definitely isn't. Well, if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff of Juice and Java, feel free to follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram for special bios, like us on Facebook, like us on Pinterest and check out our YouTube page for all of our full episodes. Thanks for watching. I'm Jackie Prager. I'm Jamie Weiss. And I'm Caroline Strange. Have a great day.